morning welcome to cowboy leather and shoe repair today we're going to cover something that some people use some people don't use we're going to show you how you there's three different ways you can install these uh, they call them splash rivets i call them barrel rivets whatever the name They come in handy for some uh, different projects. They hold good. They hold just as good, if not better, in stitching. So let me just kind of tilt you down here, and I'll show you the first way. Before I do that, we're going to be using that setter. I don't know if you can see it. We'll bring it right up. Okay, well, it doesn't focus very well, but we'll show you anyways. The only drawback about this one is you have to take your project and you have to pre-punch your holes. So, I got one here. We're making key files, by the way. So, I poked two holes. I've already started this one through. I put the uh, key ring itself on there. Poke that through, fold it over. See how it sticks out the other side. I'm going to put you, move you down a little bit here. All right. It helps to have a solid block to do your banging on. Put your uh, mushroom tool on there. I use a metal hammer. I, in some of my videos, I say no. I don't like using a metal hammer on metal tools because it just destroys them, but I find if I use a, a maul or something else, it takes me more, more whacking. So, hit about three, four times. It's kind of domed on that side and mushroomed on that side, or some people call it a splash. I'll do it again. Now, you remember, when you go to put these through, you put your finished cap on the outside, facing outward, because what's going to happen if you don't get these set down in there tight, it's going to leave a burr, and burrs, you catch yourself on them, customers will catch yourself, and that puts it down in there kind of not countersink it but it puts it down in there nicely all right that's one way now I've got a Rex number one same as some of the bigger ones that you can pick up at uh, your local uh, low supply store you know, if you got one of those, fine. You already know how to do these. But if you have, if you're doing everything on a budget, this will work just fine. Now, when you put this in here, you put it. That goes down. Slip it in. Kind of, sort of line it up. We'll like it. push down, give it an extra hump, I'll do another one, just for you to see, now these I'm, I'm using uh, 7 sixteenths rivets, sometimes you can't find them, they'll call them 6 sixteenths, if you look in the uh, catalogs from the leather supply stores. Again, put the rivet in there, push down, give an extra little tweak, just like that. Now, I'm going to put you on hold because we're going to move over to the big machine. Just a minute.
All right, this is the bigger riveting machine. This this feeds itself. This one you got to be careful with. This will get your fingers if you're not paying attention. Bend it around, stick it under there. Get your fingers out of the way. Just like that. I'll do you another one. They make several different riveting machines. You can get the one that's foot operated. It, turn it around. Just told you to make sure. Just like that. We're all good. Uh, so that's how you set the uh, splat. Ooh, excuse me. Splash rivets. That's the three ways that I do it. Like I said, I use the big machine because usually I've got uh, anywhere from 25 to 100, if not more, to make. And time is money. I don't use the uh, the drift, poke holes. I don't use that method. Once in a while, if I'm doing something really kind of like intricate and I want it to look good on the piece that I'm working on, I will use the uh, Rex Riveter. But like I say, they work just as good. Uh, you can get them. You can get those rivets in copper, stainless steel, uh, nickel plated. I. Those are the only ones I use if they come in any other th any other uh, metal. I don't know, but like I say, I use the copper and I use the stainless steel. Stainless steel doesn't rust. Copper doesn't rust. And some of the th some things I I make I will use copper because it just gives it that extra uh, pizzazz, if you will. So. I didn't want, I'm not going to drag this one on. I just wanted to make a quick video and show people, anybody that doesn't know or doesn't understand how to put them in or what machines you can have or get to put them in. Now, I got that Rex, that Rex Riveter. I got that at a yard sale, I believe it was. Uh, the big machine, I got that when I bought a bunch of other leather uh, equipment. And you can get the uh, rivets. I think, I think there's 20 to 50 rivets come in a pack. And you get that, uh, that drift. That's the cheapest way to go right there. I pick, like, for the riveter I think I paid two three bucks but once you know it comes in handy you know if you're making a lot of something using uh, hand tools is great but if you can do something like use that rip that Rex riveter you don't have you take out one step by not having to poke the holes. The big machine that definitely don't have to poke holes because when that when you step on that pedal and that thing goes kachink and drives that rivet through there, it's done and over with. And you know that sometimes you got to play with the uh, if you're using thicker leather, you got to adjust it. Direct riveter, that pretty much, if you got a long enough rivet, you can push down on it. It'll set the rivet, make it clean. And one thing about direct riveter, it's not noisy. You might hear it go, you know, when it starts cutting through the leather, but it's not noisy. That big machine is banging with the uh, hammer and the drift, that's noisy. So, if noise bothers you, go with the Rex Riveter. But, 
I'm going to get to work. It's 9 o'clock. It's time for me to open the doors and uh, fix some shoes and make some stuff out of leather. Take big pieces and turn them into little pieces that I can uh, sell. So, everybody have a good day. And uh, we'll see you next go around. Cowboys out. Have a good one. Bye now.